Uh, hello and namaste, New York. Uh, hope you all are doing well and enjoying the conference so far. Uh, thank you so much for joining my talk, and I really appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm really excited today to be talking about uh, building uh, scalable multi-tenant uh, applications with Next.js. Uh, in the short talk, we'll be covering what multi-tenancy is, uh, what are the advantages of multi-tenancy, uh, what are the uh, measures that you need to keep in mind when you're building a multi-tenant application, and how does Next.js help us uh, in all of that. Uh, before starting, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Chakit Arora. Uh, I'm a solutions engineer at Storyblock. Uh, I'm a full-stack developer. Uh, I'm a technical content writer. I like to be involved in communities. Uh, I'm always here and there in the meetups, so probably you can you can find me somewhere. Uh, and this is my website, as mentioned over here, chakitarora.com. And uh, th there is my Twitter as well, Arora Chakit. You can reach me anytime you want. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 just dive into the topic then. Uh, before starting multi-tenancy, we need to know what a tenant is, right? So, uh, what is even a tenant? Uh, by definition, tenant uh, is something that, uh, uh, you know, like a group of users or a group of people visiting your app, using your app, uh, who share the same access or a similar access. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, uh, you can see that, uh, you know, like, for examples, uh, for example, on your website, let's say if someone is visiting, uh, normal users will have uh, different uh, access, the e -com, site will be something else the blog will be hosted on a different uh, portal let's say there are going to be different internal portals company portals and so on just to give you a real use case scenario let's say there's a test platform or something like that where students they come in and they give tests uh, then there is going to be one tenant which is going to be students uh, there is going to be another tenant which is going to be teachers who are making the tests or building up the tests watching seeing the analytics and so on uh, then there is also going to be another tenant over there, let's say admins, who are going to be, uh, you know, like taking a look at everything, adding teachers, uh, uh, giving them permissions and so on. So nowadays it's it's pretty common to have these sort of applications which have everything in one. But let's also see a bit more detail of how it looks. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about what is multi-tenancy now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, to, to know multi-tenancy, we also need to know the architecture of how multi-tenant architecture looks as well as uh the 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 single tenant architecture looks so let's let's take a look at the single tenant first uh this is how the architecture looks like so uh this this used to be very common uh a, a couple of years ago and still is uh there's no harm in this but we will will discuss the benefits of multi-tenancy and everything but this is how a single tenant architecture looks like so you have a tenant uh, maybe maybe a student, for example, uh, the, the thing that we discussed before for a test platform, uh, they'll have a separate application for them and a separate database for them. Then teachers might have separate application for them, separate database for them, and so on. So that's how a single tenant uh, architecture looks like. But when we go to the multi-tenant architecture, they all share the same app, but they have different access. They have different uh, roles over there. They have uh, uh, different permissions over there and so on. So this is this is how the architecture looks like in that case. So no matter whoever is visiting the website, visiting your app, it's going to be the same app. And uh, the database can be shared, cannot be shared and so on. That depends on the architecture, but they all can share the same app with different sets of permissions and so on. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we, we can we can talk about a bunch of examples in this case, you know, like I'm, I'm sure that everyone might be using something where they have some sort of access and uh, their managers or their admins are going to be having different access and so on. That's a similar example that we discussed before. Uh, yeah, that's that's the basic example. And uh, that's how the that's how the architecture looks like every every tenant, they can visit the same app and uh, then the app is going to handle everything for them. Uh, they'll the, the app is going to show a different layout. The app is going to show uh, different uh, uh, different color themes. The app is going to the app can be completely different as well. Uh, let's talk about the benefits of having multi tenant uh, architecture uh, a bit. Uh, yeah, this this so all of these listed ones over here are the benefits, and we the the the, the account can go on. There there are many more. Uh, uh, yeah, there, there are many more benefits as well. Uh, the first one would be easy maintenance. So uh, as you can see, uh, you know, like you're, you're maintaining just one app. Of course, the app can have then different uh, uh, code bases maybe, but you know, like you, you can share some of the code. So the maintenance is easy. You can uh, follow an atomic approach as well, where you can share a lot of components. Uh, it's efficient. And as, as you know, like as we're sharing everything, as we're um uh working like this it's scalable as well and cheaper of course uh, if you're if you're uh, if you're using just one app 
same similar sort of databases uh it's it's pretty easier to maintain three different infrastructure compared to compared to maintaining three different infrastructures uh, let's also see the challenges that come up with multi-tenancy. So the first one here is, for example, scalability. Uh, when we are, you know, like if, if you have completely different applications, it's kind of easier at times to scale. I mean, now we have a bunch of tools to scale the multi-tenant architecture as well. Uh, but just just talking about the the, the old structure, it, it's it's pretty easy, right? You, you have a complete separate application for everything. So you can just uh maintain it the way you want you can just scale it the way you want isolation was pretty easy uh, in this case we need to maintain the isolation we need to uh, make sure we have measures so that no one can access the other person's data or so on so other other tenants data so the students cannot access what the teachers see and so on uh, same goes for security and customization you need to have different sorts of customization uh in place uh, let's move on and let's see how multi-tenancy works with Next.js. So what I want to do is I'm going to quickly cover uh, three basic things uh, like, you know, like, like when the user comes, when the tenant comes onto the website, what would you do and how, how the things work. So the first thing goes on is, uh, you know, like you need to detect the tenant. Uh, they can be in different ways. So, you know, like you can have uh, students.myapp.com. Uh, you can have, uh, you know, like teachers.myapp.com and so on. Uh, then it could be path based as well, you know, like where, where you have myapp.com slash teachers, myapp.com slash uh, students, and, and a bunch of things. Uh, we need to, you know, like whenever some whenever someone is visiting these subdomains of our uh, platform, we need to identify which tenant is that. So that that is pretty easy with Next.js nowadays. You know, like you can just have middlewares in place, and the middlewares can detect the tenant for you. Uh, same goes for server server side props. It depends on the use case, but server side props, which is a Again, Next.js feature can also allow you to uh, identify the tenant and so on. Uh, this can also be query based, uh, but not. Uh, I haven't seen many examples of this being query based. It can be either subdomain or path based, but yeah, uh, it's it's pretty easy to identify the domain, and that would be the first step. And also, you know, like with with Next.js, uh, you can have these different domains in place. Uh, you you can pretty easily organize these different subdomains, different paths, and so on. Uh, let's move on to the second step, uh, which is dynamic routing. I have a couple of screenshots in place over here, which which I was I was looking at and I was uh, trying to create for this presentation. Uh, but yeah, uh, in this case, we also need dynamic routing, right? I mean, you don't want to show the same uh, pages to both of the tenants. So in this case, uh, next year's gives you a very good, uh, uh, you know, like a very good way to maintain all of these things. You can have completely separate routes. So uh you know like for example in this case uh tenant one can have a different layout tenant two can have a different layout and this is something which is uh very important right uh you, you want to have a customized and personalized uh look and feel for the for the uh for the tenant coming in then you can just completely separate them by this uh, and of course you know like you you don't have to do everything uh let's say very very manually i mean you you get a bunch of features with next.js as well you know like it's not that you have to generate all of these pages you can use things like generate uh, static params and so on for uh making these things easier i mean just just mentioning it because these things are pretty much used with uh you know like used with these sort of folder structures and so on and then of course the middleware can be uh, somewhere sitting on the root level uh, moving on, let's say you have uh, now you have identified the tenant. You are inside the application. Uh, you have a complete different look and feel for the tenant. Uh, but now it also depends on you know like what they interact with. You know like you you again don't want to fetch something for them that doesn't belong to them. Uh, in that case, uh, you know like the API routing that Next.js have can also be very useful. Uh, you can see that you know like you can just uh, do API uh, slash tenant ID, uh, which is going to be which can be anything. So you can also separate the APIs in such a manner where you can you know like isolate the data for uh, isolate the data fetching uh, for different tenants. And this goes for security as well. Uh, you can use uh, middleways for this case as well for request validation and so on. So uh, this would be a general way of how you would uh, uh, do the API routing as well. Uh, quickly moving on to the other slide where I would want to just highlight a couple of more features with Next.js that can help you around this. Uh, we have already spoken a, cup, uh, a couple of times about multi, uh, middleways, uh, but you know, like these are all the listed things that the middleways can help you with while you're building your multi-tenant application. For example, authentication, authorization, server-side redirects, uh, conditional redirects, data isolation, and so on. And this is a very basic 
uh, snippet over here that can help you uh, understand how it can work. You know, like you can just uh, split the, you can just get the domain split it and just redirect it to the layout that you want to. So that's that's how easily the middleware would work. Uh, moving on uh, to the last topic, which is scalability. Just wanted to talk about how you would scale these applications. Uh, in this, I generally want to talk about uh, the uh, the the uh, you know like the architecture or the ecosystem that Next.js has. Uh, you know, like there, there is caching, which can help you uh, scaling these applications. It's a component-based approach. It's a modular approach where you can share the uh, modules. You can easily do load balancing. You have a bunch of uh, serverless functions, serverless platforms that you can use with Next.js, uh, which can you know, like which can perform different things for you at different times for different tenants. Let's say. Uh, then there are different types of rendering that can help you with uh, you know, like maintaining these architectures and scaling these things. Uh, authentication we already covered that with middleware but there are also different uh, ways in which you can uh, do the authentication and yeah that's that's how you scale a uh, multi-tenant application with next um uh, yeah and you know like to conclude this is what i always say uh, i know next has been there for a while now and there are different uh, different uh, uh, frameworks as well but uh, looking at the way next is scaling nowadays i'd like to say next is next so you know like it's it's next is always uh, coming up with exciting features and so on. And uh, it's pretty common nowadays uh, to use uh, these sort of frameworks along with, uh, you know, like the capabilities they have uh, for maintaining multi-tenant uh, multi uh, mul uh, multi architecture. Uh, and yeah, that's that's all about the talk. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and uh, in case you want to reach out, again, that's my Twitter on the left bottom. Feel free to do that. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your conference. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.